My name is Linda Salvati and 14 years ago I was diagnosed um, with lung cancer. I'm a never smoker and so I was shocked. I was surprised because I didn't at that time ever think I could get lung cancer. So certainly people that don't smoke can get lung cancer. We have a history of lung cancer on both sides of my family with my mom and dad. My mother passed away at 60. She suffered three surgeries all in the same spot, the thoracic, the big surgeries where they cut you wide open. And she lived 10 years and she had radiation, no chemo. And then my father, 15 years later, he had esophageal cancer and other things going on. He passed away. So I went to my main doctor. He said, would you do a CAT scan for me? I did the CAT scan and there was a tumor in there the size of a um, nickel. So fast forward, I spent the next maybe seven months. This is in 2007, next seven months researching. Sue and I moved from New York in 2009. And the first thing we did was found a physician who did all the baseline studies. And when they did an x-ray of my chest, they found something that required um, a specialist to look at it. And I was introduced to Dr. McKenna. And I went to several doctors until one doctor at UCLA, uh, Dr. Guerin, sent me to Dr. McKenna. And I went to him, I brought my film with me. And uh, Dr. McKenna spent a lot of time with me and my husband. And after about 45 minutes, uh, he called me over to look at the blown up um, scan. And he showed me that um, it was cancer. Who at that time determined that I had sarcoids, but that he, he wanted to watch it. And we did it annually. And in 2013, he found a cancer on the edge of my lung. And so he diagnosed it as bronchial alveolar carcinoma. And it's a slow growing cancer. He said it could have been there for years. I was shocked, of course. I mean, my brother was a smoker and died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, I never thought of myself as somebody who was vulnerable to it, and uh, yeah, I was shocked. As it turned out, I had an unusual liver enzyme elevation in my liver, and it was so high they couldn't do surgery for a couple months. So I had to live with this, knowing that I couldn't get it out until the enzymes went down. It was a matter of days. Um, he wanted me in the hospital immediately, I think, probably. From diagnosis to surgery, it was 72 hours. When it was time, I had the surgery done. He removed my entire right lower lobe. It's the biggest lobe in, that you have of the five. So I was kind of bummed about that, to have to remove the biggest one. But uh, he removed it. Removing the cancer was at the edge of my lung. They removed a lobe of my lung and it didn't require any follow-up treatment. And we just continue to monitor it first on a six-month basis and now on an annual basis. The really amazing thing to me was that when he removed it, even though I was a stage one, it was had gone through the lining of my lungs and it had I had a little touch of adenoma tumor in there too. It was mostly BAC and then it had some aggressive adenoma. And it had eaten through the pleural and was right abut to go out into my chest cavity. And it was a butt to that little membrane that separates your lungs from your chest cavity. And so within, who knows, a day, two weeks, I could have been stage four and done. So knowing those things and having a doctor have that kind of direct communication, you know, without embellishment or the, you know, you're gonna be fine kind of pat on the back. He dealt with me directly and honestly and for the way I, I look at the world, having somebody who treats me that way makes me confident. So that is the miracle here, really, is that he called it. He didn't say wait and see in another, another few years. He called it, got it out right in time, or I wouldn't be here. I think that with all, with your health generally, having regular checkups, you know, making sure that you're in, in the hands of the, the most common professionals that you're you can have access to and then, you know, um, just try to live as healthy a life as you can because all these, the, all these kinds of uh, precautionary measures, I think, affect your health. So it, 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 was, uh, it was a wake-up call. So, I mean, I'm just shocked about this because, uh, you know, it just never entered my mind that I would be a lung cancer survivor.
The, the best part for me is not only do I find a surgeon, I have a friend. You know, Kathy and, and, and Rob are friends of Sue and mine. We socialize on a, on a regular basis. Um, but because he is who he is, when I'm at the hospital seeing him, he is my doctor. When we walk out the door, he's my friend, and we don't confuse the two. And that's very rare, you know. Uh, I love the man. You know, and I researched Dr. McKenna so much. I mean, I researched and researched, and I went, he's the best, and I'm going to the best. And so I can't ask for anything more. <laughs> oh, I love to just give him a big hug. He's a huge bear, and I give him a big hug. I just love him to death. It's like, I go back to the person that is successful, you know? And I'm cancer free. <laughs>